Starry Knights. Easily one of my favorite decks of all time. I've always been a big fan of Say Are You, the vanilla monster. Uh, mainly just because of its vanilla text and its art. It's just a very old card. I don't know why I've always had a, a very uh, large liking for it. And then also considering that fairies are uh, one of my favorite types within the game. And for Konami to basically just make an entire deck revolving around Seiryu is easily one of the coolest things I could have asked for for a deck to ever become. Um, so as you've already might have known, this is a Starry Night deck profile. And before I begin, uh, obviously because this is a deck profile, don't treat this like the Bible where you have to, uh, you know, consider all the cards inside. And, and if you're considering building this deck, you have to build it every by, by every card shown within this video basically just use this as like stepping stones if you're considering building this deck i really do recommend it it's incredibly fun it's more of like a control deck and it's not really much of a powerhouse um i myself am not a fan of control decks i think they're incredibly boring I, i'm just a big fan of rogue uh beatdown decks i think uh those are the most fun to play but these are actually one of the very few and rare uh, instances where I'm actually liking and having fun playing this deck in a, this control type of manner. Um, so again, just use this as a means of like, you know, if you're considering building this deck or, you know, you don't know what to put inside, just use these as for reference. So to start off, uh, the main card of this entire deck is Starry Knight, Starry Dragon, which I'm really not too sure why Konami decided to change the name. Uh, from Radiant Say Are You to Starry Night Starry Dragon, which is, is so incredibly cheesy. I, I hate this name more than anything. It's so cheesy to say. I, I, I feel like a five-year-old every time I say it. Um, but basically, uh, what it does is that if it's Nora Summon or Special Summon from your hand, uh, you could target one card in the field and destroy it. And this card cannot be destroyed by battle with a dark monster or by a dark monster's effects. And once per turn at the start of the damage step, this card attacks an opponent's monster. You can banish that opponent's monster until the end phase. Also, this card can make in a second attack in a row. Now, notice how none of these effects are once per turn. And if you're able to sum th this entire deck's gimmick is being uh, wanting to summon uh, Seiryu from your hand as much as you possibly can. And for that reason, you're going to be constantly blowing up cards in your opponent's side of the field, constantly like popping cards and, and trying to disrupt them from you know, doing anything and, and advancing their plays. Um, I think it's also really cool, the, uh, the fact that it has a very minor form of protection. It's, it's not a, it's, it's very unexpected, but it's definitely not uh, unwelcomed. Um, and then I think it's also really cool that it's basically able to attack twice. If your opponent has uh, a boss monster that you can't beat over, it can just attack it, banish it, and then just attack your opponent directly or, or try to kill something else. Uh, just really get great removal too if you're going against Exceed monsters. But like I said, this card is the heart and soul of the deck. So you want to see this card uh, as much as possible. And you want to special summon it from your hand as much as possible. And then on to the Starry Knights. Uh, we have Starry Knight Rael. Uh, I played three of her. Basically, uh, you want to see her as much as possible as well. Because when she's Nora Summon, uh, she lets you search your Starry Knight spells and traps uh, from your deck to your hand and then she also has a graveyard effect which uh the majority of the starry knights uh do uh you could banish this card from your graveyard you could target one starry knight monster in your graveyard except her and special summon it and you can only use each effect to starry knight rail once per turn so like i said she's also the bread and butter of the deck in where she searches just about everything into the entire deck uh from starry knight ceremony to arrival to uh your your negating trap which is a uh, starry knight blast so, like I said, you want to see her as much as possible because she will get you all the combo pieces that you need in order to make this deck function. And in order to summon out your Starry Knight, Starry Dragon, uh, I play three Starry Knight Astle. Astle's effect is that it's a quick effect. You could target one light monster you control and tribute it. And if you do special summon one level 7 dragon monster from your hand, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target... Uh, one level 7 dragon monster you control, it gains a thousand attack until the end of your opponent's turn, and you can only use each effect uh, once per turn. So again, th uh, 
Aside from all the spells and traps that you use to help special summon uh, Radiant CRU from your hand, uh, Astol is one of the few monsters that can do that by himself, and it's a quick effect, so this also adds to the disruption factor. And I think it's also really neat that uh, his graveyard effect lets you pump up uh, Radiant Saryu by 1000, so she will become 3500, uh, assuming it's a girl. It's, I don't know, I guess a feminine dragon, at least to me. So Astol is, for me at least, definitely a 3 of as well. And for the 2 ofs, when it comes to the Starry Knights, I play 2. Uh, Starry Knight Flamel. If an opponent monster declared an attack, you can send this card from your hand or face a field to the graveyard and special summon one level 7 dragon monster from your hand. Uh, in quick effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one level 7 dragon monster you control or in your graveyard and return it to the hand. So again, Flamel is also um, used for the disruption factor. Um, so you can, when it's during your opponent's battle phase, you can ca uh, completely catch them off guard and special summon CRU from your hand and pop one of their one of the monsters that uh, you know might go for game or something like that. And then Flamo, which I ha I can easily say is probably one of the more useful effects, which is his uh, uh, bouncing uh, effect, uh, where you know you banish from the grave and you return either from your field or graveyard back to your hand. Uh, you can add uh, Starry Knight, Starry Dragon from your uh, field or graveyard to your hand. Because there are there are going to be instances where you know it might be sent to the graveyard, um, and you need a means of bringing it back, um, which is why we play stuff like Foolish Burial to send it to the grave, to send Flamel to the grave, and then we can immediately recover our star, uh, say are you, from my graveyard to your hand. And then, for the last of the Starry Knights is Starry Knight CL. Uh, CL is the newest Starry Knight that comes in Lightning Overdrive, and. <laughs> Part of me is incredibly mad that he didn't come ultra rare or at least super rare himself. Uh, this Pretty much this entire deck comes from Ghost from the Past, which is an, is an all foil set, which is all ultra rare and of course uh, ghost rare, uh, but that's incredibly hard to pull. But CL for some reason comes common and it's kind of an eyesore every time, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the like the majesty of this deck, like this awesome artwork and these, these awesome like winged fairies and then CL for some reason comes common. Uh, it's kind of annoying, but you know, what are you going to do? Anyways, uh, CL says that this card is in your hand. You can return one Starry Knight monster or one level 7 dragon monster you control to your hand, uh, except himself, and then you can special summon this card. If you control no monsters, you can banish this card from your graveyard, special summon one level 7 dragon monster from your hand. You can only use each effect if CL wants per turn. So CL is especially really good in this deck, considering that, um, like I said before, is that you want to see Rael as much as possible because she will search just about anything that you need in this deck. And if she's the only one in your hand um, and you want to search for something next turn, you can normal summon her and then use CL's effect to return the rail back to your hand and then just special summon him in whatever you want. So he's really good at recovering uh, rail back to your hand so that you can search later. Um, and again, like I said, it's also good to return uh, Radiant CRU from your field or grave or anywhere back to your hand so that you can special summon her um, multiple times so that you can pop cards on your opponent's side of the field. So CL is really good for that reason. And he's also especially good if like you know your only CRU that you have access at least like you know in the first couple turns is in your graveyard because CL's effect lets you banish him and then uh, special summon, uh, I'm sorry, if C Radiant CRU is in your hand and you have no other cards and CL's in your grave then he lets you special summon uh, CRU from your hand. So he's so he's also really good for that um, uh, like being able to tour out uh, Radiant CRU as much as possible. So that's it for the Starry Knight cards and off to the more generic uh, monster cards. So I play two Honest. I am playing uh, Ties of the Brethren in this deck and for that reason I'm able to uh, summon out all the combo pieces, all the Starry Knights that I really need for this deck. And considering that Ties of the Brethren doesn't specify, you know, names specifically, you can su you can summon, you know, monsters of the same level, the same type and attribute. And Honest is one of the few cards that um, uh, that fits those criteria. Um, the one of the problems with this deck is that it's not very good at beating down uh, your opponent. Like I said, it's a very control heavy deck, uh, and 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 it tries to you know pop as many cards on your opponent's side as feels possible. So being able to beat over like high attack monsters is uh, or go for game as fast as possible isn't something this deck um, is, is very good at. 
So I believe playing at least two honest in here is very good. You can play three. I, I thought about playing three and then one was okay. Um, but for me personally, I think playing two is just what this deck needs, especially considering that you can search it and this deck has very little firepower. And then uh, for the last of the fairy monsters, I am playing the one uh, Mahat in this deck. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not crazy or whatever, although some of my friends think I am, but I play Mahat in here for multiple reasons. The one being that um, not only do I love this card, I absolutely love the art for it. I think it's such an awesome card, um, but also considering that I've always wanted to play this in a deck that encircles Mahat in some way or another, because I think it just has a, a really interesting effect. So what he does is that um, he cannot be nor summoner set. Uh, must be special summoned by sending one face up level 7 dragon type monster or one face up light fairy monster you control through the graveyard and cannot be special summoned by other ways. And then once per turn, you can declare three card names, reveal the top three cards of your deck, and add any of them that you named uh, to your hand. Also, send the remaining cards to the graveyard. This card gains attack and defense equal to the number of cards added to your hand by this effect. So, again, I like to play Mahat because I have a reason to play Mahat. Like all, the, literally, uh, literally all the cards in this deck is Fairy and say, are you being Dragon? So the chance of you summoning him are very high. And not only that, the reason why I play him in here is because of the reveal factor, uh, his effect. Because, like I said, the majority of this deck is Starry Knight cards, and like I said, the majority of the cards that you're going to be uh, declaring to search off the top of your deck are going to be Starry Knight cards. So you, the the chances of you like not gaining anything, uh, not declaring anything, and not being able to add anything uh, from the top of your deck um, are very low. Like you're gonna be able to possibly add maybe at best uh, two cards, and at the very least, like you're gonna get lucky and declare one to add to your hand. And then, because considering that some of them g will go to the grave, that's okay because the Starry Knights have graveyard effects. So. I just think he's a really, really fun card to play in this deck. He's definitely uh, one of my favorite cards of all time. And for me to have a reason to play this card in this deck uh, is all the more reason why I love this deck more than anything. Um, so I genuinely consider you uh, you should play this card in your deck because he's just incredibly fun for that reason. And then just to round out the monsters, uh, we are playing Hand Traps and I'm just playing uh, Two Ash Blossom. Uh, you know, just no really other reason besides uh, being a hand trap and this is uh, disrupting my opponent's plays. Um, so onto the spells, we are playing uh, three Starry Knight Bellfire. Bellfire is uh, one of the other searchers that this deck has, one of the many ones. Uh, you can add one Starry Knight monster or one level seven dragon monster, uh, excuse me, from your deck to your hand. Then if you control no monsters and your opponent controls a dark monster, you can special summon one level seven dragon monster from your hand. Again, Rael searches just about anything in this deck, and on top of that, Bellfire literally searches Rael or literally searches uh, Radiant Say Are You. Uh, there's just so much search power in this deck, and the Bellfire just gets you all the combo pieces that you need. If you're missing a Starry Knight, if you're missing Radiant Say Are You, if you want a special summon, if your opponent has like a, uh, like a Dark Lord or something like 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 a Dark Monster, you know this this card is incredibly uh, great for the deck. And then uh, I am playing uh, three Starry Night Ceremony. Uh, Ceremony says during your main phase you can reel one light fairy monster uh, in your hand. And if you do add one level seven dragon monster from your deck to your hand, then place that revealed monster uh, to the bottom of your deck. Then if your opponent activates a card or effect, uh, you can special summon one level seven dragon monster from your hand. You can only use one Starry Night Ceremony effect per turn and only once that turn. So again, the search power with this deck is insane. You literally you can search all the combo pieces that you need to set up your board. Uh, uh, you know, going first, assuming that you got lucky and are going first. Uh, you know, this is a control deck, so you really, really want to uh, do that and uh, emphasize creating a board that will disrupt your opponent. And ceremony just searches say, are you? If you have like all the Starry Knights in the world in your hand but you have no Radiant Sayaryu, Ceremony just lets you swap them out and then gets you the Sayaryu that you need. And again, this this is another one of the few cards that lets you special summon Sayaryu from your hand with the last effect when your opponent tries a Resolve effect. And then I do play just one uh, Starry Knight uh, uh, Sky. Um, 
you don't really need to play this card. Um, if you choose not to, that's perfectly fine as well. I play this because um, it lets you uh, do some uh, Xyz plays because you get an additional normal summon uh, for your Starry, Starry Knight monsters or uh, for a level 7 Dragon monster. Um, and then also, if a level 7 Dragon monster you control returns to the hand, you can draw one card. That's all it literally does. So like I said, if you opt to not play this card in your deck, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to. Um, but I don't think playing more than one of this is, you know, good to do. Um, because you don't really need to see this card. Like, unlike most decks where, you know, you want to play three field spells and terraforming to see your field spell to make your deck function. Um, this card, like, it doesn't really facilitate anything for this deck. Like, literally all the searchers in this entire deck, um, might as well have been a bit field spells. Because, like I said, they search just about everything that you need in this deck. All the comp pieces that you need. Uh, so Starry Night Sky isn't necessary, but I like to play it because for one, it's a Starry Night card. And two, that um, with the cards that I have in my extra deck, it lets me be able to uh, fully utilize them. So now on the more generic spell cards, like I said earlier, I am playing uh, three Ties of the Brethren. Uh, all the Starry Night monsters are level four, and uh, they all have the same exact type and attribute. So playing this guard uh, card uh, lets you bring out all the combo pieces that you might need um, just to set up like like a wall and stuff like that um, and and considering that you can special summon honest and add them back to your hand for added protection or just you know push for more power um, gives me all the better reason to play ties of the brethren uh, and then for more like the generic uh, things um, <laughs> yeah I put generic in quotation marks though uh, I'm playing three pot of prosperity now I know how expensive this card is, I solely just want to play it because uh, considering this deck has not much of a huge emphasis in using your extra deck um, is why I usually play this card. Um, I know it's an incredibly expensive part card but um, there are many different cards that you can uh, swap this uh, out for. Um, I know Pot of Extravagance is just a little bit lower than this so if you want to play that that's perfectly fine too, it just adds more consistency, more draw power. But that's the sole reason why I play this card. Because you don't really use your extra deck. Um, your entire goal is, surro is surrounding uh, summoning Sayaru from your hand as much as possible. So it's just in here just for the uh, added draw power. And then also I'm playing two Pot of Duality. Um, as you also might have noticed that this deck doesn't special summon a whole lot. You know this isn't like a turn one five board, uh, 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 five negate board, you know, uh, kind of deck. Um, and it's not like a road deck, it's just a control deck. You're not going to be special summoning all that much. Um, and, and if anything, you're going to be nor summoning um, a lot more because Starry Night Sky also helps with that. So um, that's in here for those reasons. Just gets me more access to the things that I really, really need. And then just as generic things, Foolish Burial lets me send any Starry Night I need into the grave. Uh, Harpy's Feather Duster just to get rid of annoying back row and then called by the grave You know they try to hand trap me or do something really annoying and pesky so and then on for to the traps uh, I am playing three uh, Starry Knight Arrival Arrival says that during your main phase you activate one of these effects you can target one level 7 dragon monster you control and return it to the hand uh, and then or you can uh, you can special summon one level 7 dragon monster from your hand, and you can only use this effect to Starry Night Arrival once per turn. Uh, this is easily one of the best cards in the deck, out of, you know, all the amazing cards in this deck. Um, you're mostly going to be trying to add this card, uh, Starry Night Arrival, or Ceremony with Rael. Um, you're mostly going to be adding those ones, because this is one of the few cards that definitely makes the deck uh, function with this gimmick and summoning Sayaru the entire time. Um, and again, Arrival lets you add uh, CRU from your field back to your hand. So, you know, if you're doing it during your turn and you have, uh, let's say, Starry Night Sky, you know, you could get a free card when you, uh, you can draw off of that. Or if you have, like, Ceremony and your opponent resolves an effect, you can special summon the CRU back to your hand, uh, from your hand, and then pop card. And then if they try to do something else, they try to kill your CRU, Arrival just lets you add it back to your hand and save your, uh, your, your dragon. And then there's plenty of other cards um, that will also, you know, bring back Sayaru from your hand again and then pop another card like Astol. So Arrival is just one of the few cards that really, really helps a deck as well. And that's why I play three of them. And then I did mention how this card, this deck can negate. And uh, I do play Starry Night Blast. 
Uh, Blast, when your opponent activates a card effect, you return one level 7 Dragon Monster you control to the hand and negate that effect. And if you do destroy that card, you can only activate one Star Knight Blast once returned. Uh, I used to play this card at 1, and then I realized how great it is and how you can search it. So I bumped that up to 2. You can play 3. I don't think 1... If you play 1, it's not even worth playing at that at, to begin with. So I feel like 2 is just fine, and if you want to play 3, that's perfectly fine too. Um, it is a negate, and it does put CRU back to your hand, so you can do even more shenanigans. Like if you have a rival in the field and just special summon it back and pop another card. So I like to play 2 for that reason. And then just for the, uh, the the last trap card and the last card in the main deck, it's just the one sum limit. Sadly, I only have one right now. Um, I wish I had two. Um, but to be honest, I've been playtesting this a lot. And just having one is perfectly fine too because you can search it out uh, with your pot of prosperity or your pot of duality, you know, if it's there. Um, hell, you might even get lucky if you can call it uh, using uh, Mahat. Uh, if you declare summon limit as the top three cards of your deck. So... Like I said, this deck doesn't summon all that much. You know, you don't, you're not, you're not bringing out insane boss monsters that negate everything. You know, um, you're mostly just going to be like normal summoning a couple times during your turn. Or if you do special summon, then you know it's going to be like, um, you know, returning your rail to your hand and special summon CL or just say are you from your hand. So for that reason, I do play the summon limit. If you have two, play two. If you have one like me, then uh, you can go cry in a corner. So. And then off to the extra deck. Uh, again, there's not a huge emphasis on the extra deck. Um, it's all personal preference because you don't really access it all that much. Uh, so I played Bujinte Tsukiyomi. Uh, it's a light, uh, because you're playing light monsters, you can summon him. And then he just adds to the draw power. Uh, Castell, the Sky Blaster Musketeer for added removal uh, help. Uh, Baguska, the terribly horny tape, I mean, a terribly tired tapir. <laughs> Uh, just to, you know, stall for game if, you know, you're really breaking hard and you can't really do anything about it. Um, and this is something that I don't know if any people do. I think it's pretty fun to do. Um, I am playing Drill Driver Vespinado. Uh, the reason why is because we are playing a lot of rank 4 XCs in this deck. And Baguska Tire tap uh, Tapers effect is that when he's defense, he makes every other monster in the field go back to the defense and their effects are negated. And for that reason, you can immediately XC summon Drill Driver on top. And then he, his effect is that he can do piercing. Uh, he doesn't have another effect besides that, uh, besides him just, you know, dying. And he lets you bring back a level 4 monster from your graveyard uh, to the field. So that's why I like to play him. Again, there's not a huge emphasis in this deck's extra deck. So, you know, you can play just about whatever you want. Just uses our small guidelines. And then I just play the Utopia package. Just, to, you know, for the high attack power and just to beat over everything. And then um, just for the rank 7s, because you actually can make it with this deck, you will be summoning multiple CRUs sometimes. Um, it's just a Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon. Um, you can play Big Eye. Big Eye is also a really good option, but what I've noticed is that usually when you're making Big Eye, the game's already going to be over anyways, um, if you already have multiple uh, Radiant CRUs on the field. So Flare Metal Dragon, I just play him because of the burn effect, and that he just has added protection. Uh, while he has exceeds material, he can't be destroyed by card effects. So if like you know they're already down the uh, like like more than half their life points, then it's gonna hurt them plenty when you have flare metal dragon on the field to like get rid of stuff that you have on your board. So that's the reason why I play him. Again, you can play big guy. It's all personal preference uh, or any other rank exceeds. Um, hell, maybe even uh, master of swords or something. And then uh, for the link monsters, I play the nightmare package just for added removal. Um, and then because I have light monsters, I have Lina the Light Charmer. Um, and then for the added attack power, I'm playing uh, Borsor Dragon. Uh, I like I usually like to play Borload. Borload for me is usually the better picks, but I like Borosaur in here specifically because it just adds the attack power. This this deck is really bad at being able to kill your opponent, so Borosaur just facilitates that gap. And then this is just in here because I. Usually I can't really find anything else to put in my extra deck. And again, there's not a huge emphasis on here. <laughs> I'm just playing Elder Entity uh, Nitas, I think that's how you pronounce her name. And then uh, Cyber Dragon Nova and the Barbroid, the Ultimate Battle Machine. If I'm going against a Dogmatica matchup or something and, you know, I have to cite something in, then I'll, I put this in here just for no reason at all. Um, I just, uh, the reason why I play Barbroid over um, uh, Invoked Macabre is because I think He's the Chad, and he's the cooler machine monster to summon, so that's the reason why. But yeah, that's it for the extra deck. Uh, let me guys know what you guys think. 
Um, do you guys think that there's anything I should add, remove, um, you know, any suggestions? Because this deck, for me, considering that it's incredibly fun, there's so many things that I'd like to take in and swap out, add in, you know? Um, so if you have any suggestions, feel free to put that in there. Um, anyways, uh, I'll see you next time. Uh, like this video and then dislike it and then up subscribe. Uh, bye.